Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a wet fly. It's kind of cruncher-esque if you like, but I'm going to show you how to tie it. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. Now the thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfy. It's the Nano Silk at 12 watt. And as you can see, it's black. First thing, as always, is let's get a little touch of super glue onto the shank of the hook. Now, this flies, um, it's a bit of a faff, if I'm perfectly honest, but I think it's worthwhile. It's, uh, it's one of these flies when the fish have seen all the bling, uh, they're sick of the sight of blobs uh, and colour. And, and something just a little bit more subtle can score dividends for you. So this is a fly for those occasions. Now I've just taken my pig's tail off with my scissors and the first thing I want to do is add in my tail. Now what I'm using for the tail is a cock cape. Now I've taken the feathers from the very top of the cape, the larger feathers that I don't use a lot and I've already got one here that I've been working with. As you can see, I've already taken a tail in section off of this. But what I want to do is get these feathers near the bottom and I want a good dozen of the fibres and I'm just going to rip it away so that the points come together. Now, once I've got that in place, lengthwise I want approximately the same length as the body of the fly. So I'm going to hold that down like so and get a couple of wraps just to hold that into place. Have a look at it. It's a little bit longer than I'd like so I'm just going to ease it gently back before I get lots of different wraps on it and now I can trim the front so I'm going to trim it and then we'll have a little bit of a tidy up here. Now the body of this fly has got a slight taper in it and it, with nano silk especially at 50D like this it does take a little time to create that taper so just bear with me folks I'm wrapping as fast as I can and that will just about do it I think so I'm going to come all the way back to where the tail is and I've got that slight taper, might be hard to make out on the camera. Now the body of this fly is a, it's a great material to work with this. This is moose mane. Um, it comes in kind of different shades, you know, every animal's different. So you sometimes get these white strands, you get brown, you get black. None of these flies look the same, that's the, that's the bottom line. So I've selected three Three fibres of moose mane. I'll show you up close and then I can show you on the wider angle. And what I want to do is get rid of the really thin stuff at the top here. So if I can show you here, it's really thin. Makes great tailing actually for mayflies and um, sedges. It, it's fantastic for that sort of thing. But uh, for the purpose of this fly, I want to get rid of these. So I'll just take away the really, really thin stuff at the top. At the pointy end. Now I'm not fussed what order the uh, the body fibres come in. Uh, I'll just get it lassoed on and let fate decide how it's going to work. Now once I've tied that in, my taper seems to have gone awry a little because I've got that bulk at the back end of the fly. So again I'm just going to spend a little time just building up that cigar shape and I'm fairly happy with that. Now I'm going to come to the front, get lots of extra turns into the front end because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to bring up the body materials. Now the moose mane it's fairly robust it, it's a robust material, but even then, I'm not sure how well 
it would um, take the point of the hook clicking by it. So just be careful as you're coming up the body to avoid the point of that hook. Then as you come up your thread, if you've got the right number of wraps in, will slowly come up to meet you. And then once you've reached the thorax area, you can come over with a couple of turns to hold it into place. And then really tie down on it. A couple of turns in front, make sure your thread's not going to back up. And then you can remove that. Now I just want to tidy up this part. And as you can see, or you may not be able to see actually, it is very subtle. But I have got the cigar shape that I was after on the body. Now, this is, as I said, it's very robust. But just for belts and braces, I'm going to add a little coat of UV resin. Uh, more for the look of the fly than, than the protection on this occasion. Uh, for my own vanity. <laughs> I like my flies to look nice. But I'm sure the fish don't care. In fact, sometimes when I'm tying flies like this, I wonder why I put all the effort in. Uh, and it goes back to the old adage, fly tying is not the same hobby as fly fishing. So just carefully work your resin. Or if you don't use resin, varnish works. It just means you've got to tie the fly in stages, which is no problem if you've got the time. I don't tie commercially, so I can afford to faff about with a small number that I tie for my own boxes and the occasional friend who's blackmailed me with a bottle of whiskey. So just make sure that's cured off. And I'm happy enough with that. The next stage then is the thorax. Now... For the thorax, I am going to use some peacock hair, which I have here, and I only need one strand. But I've already picked one out. Here it is. Now, again, I want to catch the thick end in first. So I'm going to just remove the bulk of the, uh, the white bit. Then I can come in. And what I'm going to do, and this is where you get the look of the fly, is you've got to build your thorax up. If you can just talk amongst yourselves while I do this, <laughs> as I say, it does take a bit of time with the thinner um, nano silks. But the benefits far outweigh the negatives, as far as I'm concerned anyway, with nano silks. It's not for everybody. Uh, I know a couple of the commercial tyres don't like it uh, because of the faffing with the super glue at the start um, to stop the body rotation. But I don't mind it. It's just a, another little phase. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to bring my fly to the front and just note I've left about a millimetre and a half at the front and that's where my hackle is going to sit at the front of the fly. Now before I wrap the thorax I'm going to add a little bit of super glue to the bump and this just helps with the longevity of the fly after it's taken a couple of fish you don't want it falling apart on you. Get a few extra turns near the eye of the hook then I can bring my peacock herald around the thorax. Now you've got to be quite gentle with this. My peacock herald's got a habit of snapping up on you. Now once I've I've got this, the general shape of the thorax. I can bring it to the front of the eye and bring my thread over to capture that in. And 
I'm pretty pleased with that because there is a tendency, especially if you're new to tying, to crowd the eye out and I've managed to not do that. If I sweep this back with my fingers, you'll see a little bit better. Still got plenty of space there for my hackle. Now, before I uh, prep my hackle feather, I'm just going to get a little bit of wax onto the silk. And this is uh, for gripping the material. Now, for the hackle feather, I'm using this hen cape. I know it looks a bit worse for wear, but there's still lots of great feathers on this. And the reason I'm using hen rather than cock is for the movement. I'm going to get a nice cloaking effect with my hen hackle. So I've already picked a feather out of the box. And what I want to do is just trim away all the waste feathers at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is clip on to the point of the feather like so. And then... I can sweep it back and get the old Christmas tree effect that you see here. Again, what I want to do is trim away till I've got a neat little triangle to catch my thread in. Now I want to put this down so the inside of the feather is going on to the shank of the hook. I'll get one turn, two turns in, and you can see the little triangle bit. Just going to fold that back out the way now. And that's good to go. So, let's find the hackle pliers in amongst the midden of a fly tying desk, which is mine. And I'm going to attach my hackle pliers. Now, you can use the little handle you created, but you've got much more control if you use some hackle pliers, in my humble opinion. And then what I want is, depending on how heavy you want to dress the fly, I always find two to three turns is, is more than adequate. Some people like it heavier dressed, some people like it lighter dressed. It's up to you. That's the beauty of tying your own flies. You get exactly what you want. Okay, so I've trapped that in now with my thread. I can release the hackle, I'm going to damp down the thumb and forefinger in my left hand, sweep it all back, and start to work on my head. Even building a head with an iron silk seems to take a while. And there we go. So next, I can grab my little handle, pull away the feather, and then I can come along with a whip finish tool and finish off the head. Now, if you want to open up your hackle feathers, a toothbrush is ideal. Just opens up them feathers for you. Now, although I've tied this in size 10 today, you can tie these down to size 14 if you've got the patience. And I would recommend you do so because the smaller sizes sometimes work really well. So I'm just going to come in with my UV resin to create my head and I'm using Solaris bone dry for this it comes with this little brush that you see now occasionally I do overindulge with the UV resin and what you can do to correct that uh, if I can find that little bit of hackle I can't, I'll just take another bit off the cape here is get a cock hackle cape before you cure it and run it through the eye of the hook and that will pick up any any resin that might clog up the eye when you're trying to tie it on then I can come in with my torch 
and cure off the head. I find one coat's enough, uh, unless you're you're trying to take photographs and post on social media. One coat of resin's enough to um, secure the head of your fly. I hope you found that of some use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.